A new 48 hours investigation looks into the murder of a wealthy Texas jeweler. In the early morning of March 2nd, 2018, intruders entered Ted and Corey Shaughnessy's home. They shot and killed Ted, but Corey was able to fire back and hid in a closet. Jim Axelrod spoke with Corey Shaughnessy about what she saw and heard that night. Here's an early look at his 48 hours report. Before dawn on March 2nd, 2018, intruders entered the home of Ted and Corey Shaughnessy, killing him and one of the family's Rottweilers, Bart. Corey says she shot back and called 911. I'm in the closet. There were shots fired. Help me. Okay, well, we're helping you, ma'am. Help me. Paul Salo and James Moore of the Travis County Sheriff's Department say bullet casings were scattered on the floor. We had 40 caliber and 380. It was a hell of gunfire. At first, Corey Shaughnessy thought it was a botched robbery. The family business had made them wealthy. Being a jeweler, you might someday be a target. But Ted Shaughnessy didn't have any known enemies. And then assistant DA Amy Meredith says it didn't look like a robbery. There were still valuables all over the house. There was nothing stolen. But there was something missing from the Shaughnessy's house. A handgun from a bedroom once belonging to their son, Nick. He and his high school sweetheart, Jackie Edison, rushed to Austin from the home where they were then living two hours away. We began discussing the alarm system for the house. Corey says the family only armed the alarm when they were away, though Nick had access to the settings through a phone app. Police suspected he and Jackie were involved in the murder, but in the following days, the couple moved in with Corey. You could have told me aliens landed on the front yard, and I would have believed that before I would have believed that Nicholas and Jackie planned to have us killed. And Jim joins us now at the wow. table. Uh, so, Jim, uh, the law enforcement uh, folks described the night of the murder as a hail of gunfire. Ooh. What kind of challenge did that present for the CSI investigators? Well, it gave them a lot of evidence. I mean, this is the Wild West, right? There's guns, there's bullets, bullet casing, broken glass everywhere. So a lot of clues, a lot of evidence, but that also means there's a lot of clues and evidence, almost too much to process. They had to actually call in a prosecutor, which they usually don't do, just to help them deal with the immediate aftermath of the scene. Mm. Not looking good for the son. Just based on the little bit we heard there, the gun missing from his house, he still had access to the security system in well, the home. And what's more, Gail, there was a window to his bedroom that was open. Oh, and the screen was taken out and laying against the wall. So that also helped the police develop a theory of whoever sort of came through here knew where they were headed. Mm. Knew the entry point. Uh, mm. Was Ted Shaughnessy the only target that night? No. Mm. In fact, Corey, who survives, a really remarkable woman, will meet her tomorrow night in depth. She was also a target. I will tell you this. Mm -hmm. Whoever planned this, we're going to get into this tomorrow night. We're also going to talk to them. What? Talk to the suspect? Oh. Talk to them? Okay. All right. That's tomorrow a night. That's what we talk about. We, we talk about a tease. Jim Whoa. Axelrod, thank you very much. You can watch Jim's report. Shoot out. Were there other siblings? <laughs> Were there, are there other siblings? Are there other tomorrow children? Tomorrow night. Tanny, Gail, now. Exactly. Tomorrow night. Exactly, Jim. <laughs> you just said it right here on CBS <laughs> and on Paramount+. Plus. <laughs>